All right, hello, hello, friends, and welcome back to the Gaming Dad Fujo podcast. This is episode six. I am Fujosevic, your host, pro- former professional Hearthstone player and current analytical chemist. And today's episode was recorded on February 12th, 2023. Today, we will be talking about at least The Last of Us. I mean, how could we not at this point? British Columbia, Canada, and some classic gaming amongst a couple other topics. Let's get started. He's got no time to play video games. He's the gaming dad, Fujo. Nailed it. All right, and normally we like to start with some self-indulgent gaming dad talk. We're going to save that for the end. Now, instead, we will be doing a podcast, a self-indulgent podcast update instead. So this podcast is now going to be start, is starting to be shared, I should say, wherever you find your podcasts. That's right. You can take Gaming Dad Fujo with you wherever. And oh, I mean, wherever you go. Um... And of course, I mean sponsorship time. Feel free to insert your uh, your favorite sponsor right here, uh, sponsorship uh, ad right here. Um, that's right. If you're looking to advertise your men's shaving product, your VPN software, or your snake oil, you found the spot. Uh, this is fun though. It's exciting to be uh, trying to build something up on a different platform. We've done it a little bit on YouTube and Twitch over the years, and it's exciting to be doing it again. Things are not going to stop on YouTube. I'll continue to post them. Uh, we will, however, also... I want to say, however, we will also have the RSS feeds in all of the descriptions moving forward. So if you want to take Fujo on the go, you'll have that uh, ability to do so a little bit more easily. And we'll see as things slowly start get upload, getting uploaded. It's a, it's actually a bit of a process. It's been fun to try and learn that that whole funky or this funky whole podcast world. We're also, I picked a, a date and time for streaming on YouTube. It will be, we will be streaming on YouTube.com slash Fujosevich, slash Fujosevich, easy for me to say. Wednesday, March 29th, 2023, in case, you know, five years later, someone's trying to go back to like, the, where did Fujo get a start? Uh, around 8.30 p.m. Eastern until uh, we'll call it like 10 p.m. Feel free, feel free to drop by and say hi. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing in terms of camera or game. Probably Hearthstone. I was hoping Classic WoW because I've been getting really into uh, the idea, at least, of hardcore Classic WoW on the Classic Era servers. But... Um, Either way, it's going to be something I don't have to really focus on. If it's just Hearthstone, I'll do Battlegrounds or something, and I don't have to, like, focus that much. We can just talk. Uh, we used to have, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see who can stop by and say hi. It'll be, a, it'll be a fun thing, and we have a little bit of, a couple, we'll have a couple podcasts to advertise and let people know to, to see if they can drop by, then that'd be cool. And actually, talking about Classic WoW, uh, that surprisingly leads directly into our first gaming topic of old school and classic games. It's, uh... <laughs> It's, it's surprising how smooth that transition was. I should try and do this professionally. But the idea here is we're going to talk about old games released 10 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, and they're still popular, at least in small groups. Uh, we see things like uh, awesome games done quick. They have people speed running NES era games all the time. And, and more recently, we see also in a, in a larger sense, obviously these people are, you, you can watch people speed run Super Mario 1, Super Mario 3, any Sonic you've ever thought of you've ever played you can see people speed run final fantasies one through six and everything in between and it's super cool but even more recently there have been all of these old mmos these massively multiplayer online games that continue to have communities online uh even and, and not only do these games continue like sure everquest is still continuing world of warcraft is continuing all of these things but these games will exist in states that they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I think one of the, one of the biggest obviously was Classic WoW, and that's, that's what I played growing up, and I've, I've done a little bit on the channels and stuff and streaming and whatever, but obviously Hearthstone was the, the focus at that point, but the idea is that you'll take World of Warcraft from where it was, let's say, in September of 2006, and have those servers in that state live now, and people still come back and play. I think old school RuneScape is kind of the one that I don't know. I, I, I'm not, I didn't, we're not going to know the full history of every of which was the very first, but this was, so I, I have the history here, at least for this in February, 2013 old school runescape was launched in the state that it was in August, 2007. And it's continued to this day. They still have their seasonal events. They've upgraded visuals. It, it's incredible how it's become very community driven in the way that it's done and the subscription and people coming to play 
are actually really, really high, even up until there's data from 2022. Obviously, we're at the start of 2023. So it's it's really, really cool. They have a lot of community-driven stuff, and it's helping it continue. One of the games that I never played was Warhammer Online, but they have Return of Reckoning. Same kind of deal there. The servers were getting shut down at end of December 2013. By June of 2014, a group had started their own private servers to continue that service for people who were interested. Obviously, the classic WoW in August 26, 2019, I was there. I was actually streaming on... I was streaming on Twitch. Should have just, should have just stuck with YouTube. But that's that's another story. We'll talk we'll talk super self and super super self indulgent gaming dad Fujio at some point, but not today. But I was we did stream that. That was a ton of fun, and that was the, at the servers that they were in the state of two thousand and six, and that's what's continued. And then WoW has kind of done like you know the next expansion, the first expansion, and now the second expansion. However, the thing that really has been drawing me to this whole idea is the fact that there are people, like I said, World of Warcraft released in uh, twenty nineteen. In the state of 2006 and then they put the first expansion which was uh, about 2008 and now they're in the the second expansion which is about 2010 ish however there's a there's a growing community who have gone back to what are referred to as classic era servers from that 2006 state again these are these are the legal i'm not talking about private servers and stuff we can do a private server talk another time well at least for for a while what i'm talking about right now but these are the actual era servers from that are in that 2006 state and people are going in basically with add-ons to create a hardcore mode and that's what i'd mentioned on what i might what i might be streaming and basically it's it's it is a little bit hardcore there's there's no auction house there's no trading so you have to either like gather and craft everything you want and if your character dies you delete it and so the idea is like can you first of all even level up to level 60 in in classic wow level 60 is the highest level and then once you make it to level 60, are you able to do any end game stuff? It's, it's a really, really interesting challenge that I know I don't have time for. I've been, I've been toying with this idea for many, many weeks now. Let's call it months at this. It's, oh, it's multiple months at this point. It's just such an interesting, interesting challenge to try and do. An, and again, this is a game from 2006. And for some reason, in my silly, silly gaming head, I... I, I know I would have a ton of fun doing this and I have a whole bunch of actually ideas and strategies of how to make some of the early game easier to transition to a mid game because again you have to be very self-reliant and in classic wow it's very unforgiving where if especially in the early game if you pull two enemies at the same time you're almost you're not certainly dead but it's it's really high chance that you're toast and if if your character dies you lose that 20 hours you put in 20 40 60 hours potentially you've put into them and uh, like I said this is run with add-ons which basically in order to be part of the the hardcore, quote unquote, hardcore community, you need to have this add-on, which then announces if you do die, they say, oh, Fujosevich, the level 28 mage, died in the Barrens. And then so everyone, and then if I try and group up with someone with the, with the hardcore a, uh, add-on, they're going to see like, oh, Fujosevich is actually should be deleting his character. You can't group up, group up with this person. So it's really, really, again, that's, a, that's another very community-driven thing, which is very, very interesting to me. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if that's what we end up... Uh, playing but just the fact that there are these old games that people do have passion for whether whatever it's whatever it's driving it in our brain whether it's nostalgia whether it's wishing for a simpler time when i was you know back in 2006 how young was i i was probably only like 43 back then or something like that so whatever it is that drives us to have this you know this passion about these silly gaming things people still find creative and interesting ways today to kind of innovate within the rules. This is not a Blizzard, you know, directed thing or any. It's just people made an add-on that does this and allows allows us as gamers to track it. So I think it's really, really interesting. And again, there's examples in all these other games that you can that you can look up that are still running these servers. I mean, there's there's Guild Wars One. There's definitely Final Fantasy Eleven. I know I I played Final Fantasy Eleven when it came out, as well. Um, what's the other? Yeah, Ultima Online and the Star Wars Galaxies are the other really the other two that are still kind of doing things it's it's so interesting that there are these communities of people who love these things and and keep them alive what is that 2006 until today that's that's some amount of years someone better at math than me can do that math but it's it's a long time and there's still people who have this passion and can uh can keep these things going like i said it's it's fan driven it's community driven and i think that's that's one of the best ways to have these things go and again it's within the confines of a legal wow server your blizzard run server you're not doing any private server shenanigans risking some random person 
kicking their server and everything getting deleted. So it, it's also kind of cool that way. And again, like I said, I kind of, sometimes I, I start thinking like, oh, maybe if I just did this and I just, I just cut out two extra hours of sleep every night. And then I, you know, then I can have this time and I'm like, well, it's not really realistic for me to play this sort of game where you need a massive time commitment, consistent time commitment to be able to level up and do this stuff in this game, which is why as a gaming dad, Hearts, so maybe we'll just do a little self-indulgent talk and now we'll sprinkle it in. Look at that, we'll just sprinkle it in at the 10 minute mark or so, wherever we are here. And uh, Hearthstone's really not doing it for me. I'm, I'm having more fun with, I, I, I don't know, I can't find a deck on Standard. I can't find a deck on Wild uh, that I'm really into and having a ton of fun with. Uh, Battlegrounds is just kind of, I feel like I can, again, it's just, it, it's, I don't want to say it's become mechanical because... I, I don't know how high I would, would cap out, but I know I'm winning a lot at the very low ranking that I'm at. Maybe I should push myself more and challenge, but again, like I feel like I'm having more fun with Pokemon Go on my phone when I do have like 18 minutes to play than I do a game of Hearthstone, which is kind of silly, but but we'll see. And then of course there's uh, you know Breath of the Wild, but we'll we'll have some we'll have some Zelda talk maybe a little bit later. And now moving on, let's get into The Last of Us on HBO. I'm gonna talk about spoilers from episodes four and five of season one. I'm sorry. I'll, I'm going to estimate I'll talk for maybe three, four minutes about this. Uh, so if you haven't seen it and you don't want spoilers, just fast forward that much or, or significantly more than that. I'm sorry. Uh, I know I know it's like a, a current show. That's that's the issue with talking about a current show. Um, I definitely think, you know, with Last of Us, I think, it, I think it's such a high quality. I'm super into it. I haven't played the games uh, at all. So everything is completely fresh to me. Every episode that we have seen, we always find someone posting online, you know, shot by shot comparisons of the game versus the show. And there's a lot taken directly from it. Maybe the next time we talk about The Last of Us, we'll get in more in depth about why the heck do Hollywood writers feel the need to change shows Whereas you have an example like this where the source material is so good. Why change? And they haven't, by and large, from what I've read online, it's mostly not changed. And guess what? It's mostly very captivating because the game was great and uh, winning awards and all this stuff. So why change it? So let's run through uh, these last two episodes. Um, and we'll get into that discussion a little more in depth uh, another time. Uh, so episode four. Episode four was definitely slower. Episode four was a little bit slower, but it de definitely helped build the world of the last of us they showed some kansas city it showed really cool relationship stuff with joel and ellie and it ended on obviously a super intense cliffhanger with uh, guns in everyone's faces because that's always intense in a zombie post-apocalyptic zombie world uh now episode five was super, super rough <laughs> episode five i'm uh, this is like the nervous laughter it was super rough it was a fantastic fantastic episode there's 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 tension at the beginning as you try and you get well you get a little backstory which is kind of calming because you ended episode four with guns in everyone's faces and then kind of five episode five starts with again tension and there's again you know trying to protect a child which is always tension in these horrible horrible situations and then you then you finally maybe i don't know 10 minutes in you get to like they're back at the spot where the guns are in everyone's faces you kind of get a little backstory which is cool the way they're kind of doing these mini time jumps and sometimes larger time jumps i think i think it's so i'm super into it and then you have this the the, the groups all team up and they have this tense walk through underground tunnels and they find an underground hideout and again there's like oh there's there's kids painting stuff but guess what there's no one around so again horrible stuff has happened in this horrible world uh, there's great interactions, obviously, with Henry and Sam. Super, super intense sniper uh, fight happens here. I've heard that it's... I've heard a lot of funny things about from the game where it's it's very, very similar. Where, you know, you have to decide which side of the car you're going to jump out, the left or the right. And people talk about it that way. And then, of course, the our heroes make it out. Uh, they make it out. There is a, a horde of our mushroomy zombies come out. There's a, clearly a, a boss comes out there as well uh when the the gigantic mushroom man came out i was just like oh well that's a boss we're gonna have to fight at some point obviously might have to level up our uh, sniping skills um and then obviously a horrible horribly brutal ending i uh i tried not to scream i definitely gasped audibly uh fujoso miss who was sitting beside me on the sofa was brought to tears i was definitely tearing up and I don't want to, I don't, I think I use this word often, but this show has like captivated me and it almost feels weird to say that, but it's, uh, it's, 
it's really, really intense. And I'm, I'm just, I'm super hooked. I'm, I feel like, I feel like we've been spoiled with the high quality shows. And I know we did the 2022 recap a while ago, but like Andor, I thought was super high quality. We did watch House of Dragon, which again, I was, I was super into. I enjoyed it. And now this is just, it's so fantastic. And I mean, we, we know that Mandalorian season three is coming up probably like right as this ends, we're going to switch right into Mando three talk. We'll sprinkle a little bit of that in. And yeah, I think, uh, what, what's the, the, the joke that we've been making is that, you know, we're ready for a world where every other hit show is Pedro Pascal protecting a magical child. And, uh, I'm ready for it. I'm, I'm definitely, definitely looking forward to that soul crushing magical world where, where, uh, it's just going to be that over and over again. Cause it's fantastic. All right. Now quickly jumping into a non gaming related topic, but I did mention, I wanted to talk about British Columbia, Canada. So British Columbia has gotten an exemption to decriminalize small amounts of hard drugs, which is a North American first. So the way this is going to work, this is, this is a very interesting thing. Uh, living in Canada, we just legalized cannabis in 2018, October of 2018. And this is, a, this is an interesting program because we know British Columbia actually struggles with a pretty serious, pretty serious drug issue. Um, you might say drug crisis, opioid crisis for sure. So illegal drugs that are now going to be decriminalized for personal possession, 2.5 grams opioids, cocaine, methamphetamine, MDMA. Why am I talking about this? Well, again, like I said, as a Canadian, it's, you know, we've federally legalized cannabis and regulated and it's sold and taxed like anything else is. <clears throat> um, and obviously this, this to me, I think has potential. And, and the reason I bring it up because I think it has potential to do actual good in the world. I think it has potential. Obviously, detractors will jump to issues of, well, this is just going to be drug tourism. If there's some kids who just want to have a, have, have a wild party, head on over. Worst case, you're going to, worst case that's going to happen is you're going to get a, get a ticket. Um, I, I hope that this program, obviously I, I'm, I'm not in British Columbia, but I'm hoping that this program has come with a whole, whole lot of support for then uh, mental health and treatment so that when you're giving someone a ticket and I think that this has been this has been explained as part of the program where it's not just going to be like here's a ticket give me your cocaine <laughs> your drugs and get on with your day it's going to be fully asking if you need help if you need support if you're all this sort of all these sort of things so it's not just meant with the idea of drug tourism um, if uh, by the sounds of it if all you're doing, again, I, I'm, not, I'm not promoting this sort of thing, but I'm saying if, if you already are going to want to do those things, you would be able to. I'm not promoting, I'm not suggesting it, not encouraging, but I'm just saying you probably would be able to. Um, so if this, I think for this program to succeed, this is a big story in Canada, also part of why I'm bringing it up. I think it can work if there's a lot of extra support along with it. So that when these tickets are given out and you get, you get a ticket, it's decriminalized, it's not legal you then have people following up and asking. And I think hopefully, hopefully that it, it, it can help. It's a, it's a three-year program from 2023 till 2026. So it's not just like a short-term six months. Let's see if we do something. This, this should hopefully, if it's rolled out properly, have a positive impact. We've seen other cases. I think uh, Portugal has done similar things. And I think, I think one, I think a state or two within the U.S. have done this on smaller scales, not, not as large as what we're seeing here in British Columbia. This is something we'll follow up on. And, and I don't think it's going to be perfect. I don't think it's going to go flawlessly. Nothing ever does in this wild. I know that I know the sarcastic all oh, when it's government. I think in this world, nothing ever goes perfect. Nothing ever goes perfectly according to plan. And that's fine. It doesn't mean you don't want to stop doing something that hopefully, hopefully has a positive, positive impact. And we'll follow up on it in six months and see where it goes. It just, I'm just throwing it out there because I think it's, like I said, large national news locally, hit some international stuff. It's a Canadian story. And I hope, I hope again, I know it's so surprising that Fujo's trying to be positive and put a positive spin on something, even when it comes to hard drugs, that hopefully this can get more and more people help. And if that's the case, 
then we're all better off because a uh, rising tide rises all ships. And now we are going to end up with a little a roundup of honorable mentions of things that got omitted from the episode that I didn't have. We'll just go really quick, uh, rapid fire, and maybe I need some sort of sound or stinger like I'm on the radio to introduce this. Like I have my sweet intro that I paid a million dollars for that great singing to get done on. Um, let's start with obviously Netflix cracking down on account sharing. That's going to backfire. Uh, we know they're kind of, they as in Netflix are struggling. There's a million and one different streaming options and they all have different shows coming out at different times. And you can never find the thing you want on the streaming platform that you actually have. So it's kind of coming back to cable where you have to pay for a whole bunch of individual small things, whereas the whole idea with Netflix was that everything's going to be there, but guess what? Disney has their own thing, and Amazon has their own thing, and then Crunchyroll has all the anime, and all this thing, all these separate options. If you're paying 10, 15 bucks to all of them, you're still paying a ton of money every month. Um, so I think this is going to backfire. It seems a little desperate to crack down on password and account sharing. I don't think it's going to work in the long run. Next topic. Ooh. Ooh, here we go. A little anti-work topic. Corporations having the largest profits ever. Specifically, I think it was BP and a bunch of the grocery chains have all released massive profits. Highest profits ever. And this is obviously combined with all sorts of fun tax stuff and fun raising costs of living. And I don't think we'll ever get into this topic super intense, but it's definitely something big that's happening. And it's, it's, it's not a fun thing and it's, it's super complicated. So in order to talk about it with any sort of intelligence would take a lot of effort. I'm not an economist. I know it's multi-layered of what can, what can, what actual, actual policies can be done or companies just going to go to other countries that have more favorable tax taxation if you do anything too severe. So it's, it's a very complex, the world is very integrated with one another there's there's funny supply chain stuff for every single different industry it's complicated and it stinks and hopefully somehow we can make it into a better place because obviously the numbers the numbers don't lie and the numbers don't look good for for everyday regular people like us as opposed to you know company owners and executives running companies next up is e3 2023 Nintendo Xbox and PlayStation are all are all skipping this year and it's not super surprising they do this every once in a while E3 is this massive entertainment presentation comic con type thing and it's cool when they're attending but guess what all of those companies can just do their own streams and broadcasts and have a hundred hundred a hundred percent control as opposed to being on the e3 schedule and it's great when they're there like i said it's super cool to have everyone under one roof at one time but guess what nintendo just did their super cool nintendo direct where they released a little more information about legend of zelda tears of the kingdom and that's what i'm the most interested in and they pushed the date back which kind of stinks because i was really looking forward to it and again talking back to back about classic wow i'm like ooh, maybe i have a a couple months here to toss in some classic wow before tears of the kingdom but again i really don't have time for that so, but, but again, maybe, maybe I do. So it's, you know, these companies, obviously in the age of uh, everything internet, we're always going to be thrown a ton of information. So it's, it's cool. And everyone's at E3. It's not really a surprise though. And the last topic is the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. This is Final Fantasies one through six, getting kind of upgraded pixely graphics were released. Um, actually the pre-sale, I should be clear. The pre-sale for console was released in the middle of the night in North America, I don't know how many days ago, I forgot to write down the date. And guess what? Everything sold out and scalper, scalpers already have their pre-orders online for sale for over $1,000. It's not a cheap thing for six games. It's still six games, but people are selling it for so much. And this whole scalping world is just, oh, it's so, so not fun. I was actually doing groceries. We'll call it uh, at the beginning of February. It was less. It was a week ago. So it's still, it was February. And I saw someone returning. And I know I've seen pictures of this online. And I saw it. And I was, I was trying to get my phone up. But I was too far away. It was going to be too obvious. So I raised my phone up over a bunch of people. I saw a young man returning five PlayStation 5s and five Nintendo Switches. And I was very, very upset. Because clearly, it's, at least I don't want to say clearly. We don't want to jump to too many conclusions, but it seems like the timing is a little suspicious to buy that many consoles 
and then return them just after the holidays when it seems like supplies for all of these things are coming back and you maybe all of your Kijiji and eBay and whatever Amazon sales didn't go through. Very, very disappointing to see that. I was really, really upset at that. And again, just this, I mean, I might have potentially got Final Fantasy Remaster 1 through 6 on Switch and now I definitely can't. And that is going to be it for Gaming Dad Fujo Podcast, episode number six. Thanks so much for hanging out, stopping by, saying hi, like, subscribe, retweet, uh, Twitch Prime, Amazon Prime, YouTube, join the group, uh, podcast, rate and review. Uh, what else is there? I don't know what else there is to do. Um, I hope you're all, uh, <laughs> people always seem to say that. I don't know. It seems like it helps. I mean, do it if you want to. If you actually had a good time or if you want to say hi or let me know what you're thinking or gaming, feel free to drop a message. I used to be excellent on YouTube about uh, responding to everyone. Apparently the last couple months I've been awful, but I'll get better. I'm back to it. I'm back here. I'm awake. The next stream will be March 29th. That's a Wednesday starting around 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, otherwise we will post another podcast episode in a few weeks from now. And I hope you're all doing great wherever, whenever you are, stay safe and be good to each other. And we will talk to each other sometime very, very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.